Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be doing the ultimate guide to Burgundians, another civilization in Age of Empires 2. If you guys are not familiar with my ultimate guide series, I basically go ahead and take one civilization every week and go in depth on how to play it, what maps it's good on, what their strengths and weaknesses are, and just give you a general overview of the civilization to help you pick it up if you want to learn a new civ or to help you master it if it's a civilization you're already playing. There's a lot of information packed here and I hope that you're going to learn a lot and it's going to be nice and entertaining for you guys to listen to. Let's hop right in and take a look at the Burgundians in Age of Empires 2. All right, guys, starting off, the thing you need to know about the Burgundians is that it's a DLC civilization, so it's rather recent. So if you guys are returning players or whatnot, you're not going to really recognize this as a civilization because it wasn't part of the original game or even the first few expansions. However, it's a really fun and quite flexible civilization with some very key power spikes. It's actually quite an interesting one to take a look at and to pick up and play yourself. Let's take a look at the tech tree now and see what kind of options we have available and some of the bonuses the Civ has. So the Burgundians are classified as a cavalry civilization and their bonuses are as follows. Their economic upgrades are available one age earlier and will cost minus 40% and it gives you a very key advantage over your opponents in that it lets you get the economic upgrades earlier which lets you get more resources over time since the investment comes in earlier and you also get them at a discount so you get a little bit of raw saving from the get-go. A very strong bonus that leads for a little bit of a slower start but very quickly gets you a lot more resources than your opponent. The second bonus is that stable technologies cost minus 50%. This sounds amazing and quite honestly it's very strong. It is limited a little bit by the fact that they don't get bloodlines but we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. The next bonus is that they get cavalier upgrade available starting from the castle age instead of at the imperial age which combining that with the earlier bonus of cheaper technologies you can see how these two bonuses create a very strong synergy that makes a stable one of the key options for the Burgundians especially in that mid game. And their last bonus is that gunpowder units deal 25% more attack. This applies to the hand cannoneer and the bomber cannon as well as the cannon galleon on navy battles. The unique units they've got too are the Coutelier or the Coutelier however you pronounce it as a cavalry unit available in the castle and the Flemish militia which is associated with their unique tech and we'll cover that very very soon and the Flemish militia is basically just a hybrid between a champion and a halberdier. The unique techs here we are are in castle age the Burgundian vineyards which gives their farmers the ability to generate gold at a very slow pace in addition to food. Basically how this works is if you have 50 farmers for example, you're going to be generating a good amount of food because 50 farmers is quite a big number and you're going to be getting a slow trickle of gold assuming those farmers are working on the farms, similar to how relics give you gold over time at a slow pace. And the Imperial Age Unique Tech is the Flemish Revolution. This upgrades all existing villagers to Flemish Militia and also allows you to create Flemish Militia at town centers. Now the second part of this bonus isn't very relevant. You rarely want to create more Flemish Militia from your town center. However, upgrading all your villagers to Flemish Militia is quite a game changer move and, and it's quite a game-changing unique tech. Basically how this works is that if you have 200 villagers, taking an extreme example, all those 200 villagers will go over to military. Like I said, it's a unit that's similar between a champion and a halberdier and it leaves you with zero villagers. And so it's a quite an all-in move. However, it is possible to continue making villagers after researching this technology. So while your economy takes a massive hit, you're able to slowly rebuild your economy as you send massive waves of strong military to your opponent's base and trying to wipe them out one shot. There's their team bonus is that relics generate both food and gold. They generate these resources at the same pace. All right, now let's take a look at the tech tree to see what kind of options we have available for the civilization. Starting off at the archer range, that's pretty lackluster. They have the crossbowman and the elite skirmisher as well as the cavalry archer, but they're missing arbalest, heavy cav archer, thumb ring, and parting tactics, making the archer range pretty weak. However, their only really strong unit is the hand cannoneer, which deals 25% more damage. So in a situation where hand cannoneer is you know useful and you would want to go into it, the Burgundian hand cannoneer is very very solid. It also does a lot of extra damage which helps against cavalry in general and not just an anti-infantry unit. Moving on now to the barracks, they get champions and halberdier fully teched, however they are missing the supplies upgrade. They get squires and arson though so their infantry is pretty solid overall, you just don't get that saving for that champion line that you probably want if you want to use them. I'd only recommend using the champions if you really need to go into them, but otherwise use some of their other options. Moving on now to their stable and this is where the powerhouse of the Burgundians really starts to shine. Basically you're missing bloodlines which seems like a massive disadvantage because that's a key upgrade. However, you get a lot in compensation. You get the Cavalier upgrade in Castle Age, which costs half the price. So instead of 300 and 300 in terms of food and gold, it now costs 150 food and 150 gold only, making it very close to the price of Bloodlines. And the only downside to the upgrade is the fact that it takes a long time to research. The stat comparison, Bloodlines gives an extra 20 HP to all Cavalry. The Cavalier upgrade gives your Knights an extra 20 HP and an extra two attack. But it does something a lot more impactful than this. It lets 
lets you research Paladin right when you get to Imperial Age, which Paladin upgrade is also 50% cheaper. And so going for fast Paladin in Imperial Age is one of the easiest ways to end games with the Burgundians. You get a massive power spike in the Paladin unit, one of the strongest late game units, and you're able to get that right away, like three minutes after getting to Imperial Age, which is pretty much the time it takes to get Paladin and a couple other armor upgrades for your knights. You also get Husbandry at a 50% discount, so only 75 food. And I'd say the only downside is the fact that you don't have bloodlines means that your light cavalry and hussar line will be missing HP as the game goes on. Your paladin are also not that strong in post imp because they're only capping out at 160 HP. So it's really about using the power spike of cavalier and paladin upgrades rather than having extremely strong late game cavalry. Moving on now to the siege workshop, pretty basic. They're missing siege ram, siege onager, and heavy scorpion, so pretty lackluster here. But they do get the bomber cannon and onager, which are pretty flexible, and the bomber cannon deals extra damage, so you get 25% more damage on it, which comes up at taking down buildings a little bit quicker. You also get cap ram, but that's not very useful in a lot of cases. Moving on now to the blacksmith, you get all the upgrades except the ring archer armor. So it's a very solid blacksmith. Just keep in mind your skirmishers and your hand cannoneer will be pretty squishy in the late game and they can easily die to other range harass and range damage in general. So keep that in mind. Moving on now to the dock. The dock is actually decent, but it's nowhere near the best, especially come late game. You can access the fast fire ship and galleon. So you're gonna be totally fine in the early game, but you're missing heavy demo, dry dock and shipwright. So if you're really not making use of the cannon galleon or some early navy pressure in early imp, you're not really not gonna be doing too hot on the water since you're missing too many key upgrades. The university is pretty stacked, but you're missing a very key upgrade, unfortunately, which is the siege engineers, making your siege, once again, pretty lackluster. Highly recommend you just stick with bomber cannons and trebs to siege buildings with this civilization and rely on their very mobile cavalry and strong monk plays to push bases and take out enemy players. You get keeps and bomber towers though, so slow pushing on sides with some towers or claiming map with towers, both defensively and offensively, is a really decent option with the civilization. All right, taking a look now at the Coutelier or the Custodier, their unique unit. It's actually a very interesting unit and it implements a charge mechanic, which basically means that the first hit a Coutelier unit will do deals extra damage. The bonus is 20 and 25 for non-elite and elite respectively. And this charge mechanic is absolutely ridiculous. It makes this unit insanely strong and lets you one shot or even two shots a lot of very solid units. Like for example, you can easily two shots a crossbowman with a Coutelier, no matter what kind of armor upgrades they have. And so surrounding big groups of crossbow and just taking out 10 or 20 of them right away can enable you to have some absolutely one-sided fights. Aside from that, the Kutidia base stats are actually pretty decent. You have small base attack or low base attack, but you have really solid base HP. Keep in mind, you don't get bloodlines to improve it. And you get two and two armor in non-elite version and the elite version also still with two and two armor, but 11 base attack and more HP. And so the Kutidia ends up being a very solid option in terms of hit and run cavalry play. And in my opinion, is a very strong unit to execute the strategy. Just try to always fight with them when you have the charge up and you can see the charge by that small white bar above the unit. And if it depletes, it's gonna show it kind of regenerating as you wait out of combat. They also get conscription, sappers and hoarding, but that's nothing too crazy from the castle. Moving on now to the monastery, we've got all the texts except heresy and theocracy, which gives their monks pretty solid options, especially in Imperial Age. You have redemption block printing, which lets you convert siege and from further away. Missing theocracy means your mass monk play will be a little bit weaker and heresy just means that against monks you're not going to have the option to make your units die instead of being converted and as far as economy upgrades you get pretty much all of them and you get them at 50 percent less food so it's a pretty solid bonus and as the last thing take a look at the flemish militia stats 75 hp 12 attack and it has an attack bonus versus cavalry so like i said perfect mix between the champion and the halberdier and it's a very strong unit so keep in mind when you have 100 or 200 of these you can really wreak havoc on some enemy bases all right that's a pretty extensive look into the tech tree and their bonuses, but it's very important to do so to understand the kind of options we're working with. Now let's take a look at their strengths and weaknesses and really put this theory into practice. Right off the bat, the biggest thing that stands out for me is that early game economy bonus. I highly recommend you try to fit in double bed axe in Dark Age. This is a massive strength as it gets you A, the upgrade nice and early for cheaper, but it also lets you get that extra wood income from earlier on in the game, netting you more wood by the time you reach Feudal Age. And if your opponent gets it at the start of Feudal Age, well, you've had it for now a few minutes and get all that extra wood in comparison to your opponent. Not only that, but come Feudal Age, you now can get Bosar right away, which just gives you a ton of extra wood chopping potential and lets you stock up more wood per minute. The 
same can be said for their gold mining technology, but you don't really mine a lot of gold in the early game. So I wouldn't recommend worrying too much about gold mining in Dark Age or even Feudal Age, but just pick it up on the way up like normal and you're gonna be totally fine there. As far as horse collar and heavy plow, I recommend you get horse collar on the way up to Feudal Age and then you get heavy plow either in Feudal Age if you're going for like a scout rush or a slower build up, or you can get it on the way up to Castle Age and you can get it for cheaper. So it comes in at a really good time. The important thing to note here though, is that since you wanna get these economy upgrades a little bit earlier, Burgundians do get off to a slightly slower start. And I say slightly because the upgrades are coming in at a discount. So you don't wanna go for any early game rushes, like a rush with Burgundians more often than not, because you're trying to get like a slower start get up those economy upgrades and get a lead that way. Then try to attack your opponent and try to do damage and get a lead that way. It's just unnecessary to take that risk in attacking. And I'd much rather seeing you guys just get the consistent advantage of getting those economy upgrades early. So I highly recommend you take a slower approach with the civilization. And in my opinion, that's the biggest strength of it. You get to have a very slow and steady, consistent start and still pull ahead because of this massive economy bonus. In my opinion, it's next strength and I touched about a little bit in the tech tree is the fact that it can get Cavalier in Castle Age and also Paladin in early Imp really fast out the gate. I think the best way to use this and the biggest strength of Burgundians is the fact that it can go for an all-in Cavalier in Castle Age and really destroy your opponent who's on Cavalry. However, the Cavalier aren't amazing versus Archers because they still have the same tankiness as a regular Knight just with an extra two attack. And so against Archers, I don't really recommend going all-in Cavalier. However, against Archers, what you can do is still tech it to Cavalier and then just wait for that Paladin early Imp Spike, which can roll over masses of crossbow or Arbalas if they don't have Halberdier to defend them. And so that's the way to go about this matchup or the civilization power spike against archersives. However, I haven't even touched upon the biggest strength of the Burgundians and that's the Coutidier. The idea that you're able to have a unit that hits and runs very effectively and has almost no counter because the monks can't really convert it because if the Coutidier do close the ground between the monk and itself, it will one shot the monk and that is an absolutely crazy thing to, to think of. Even if the monk gets sanctity and upgrade, the Coutidier can just start to two shot it and it doesn't really help that much. And so the monk isn't an option. Pikemen, they help a little bit, but again, with the low HP of a pikeman, a couple Kutsidae can easily two-shot it or three-shot it, and so the pikeman will just die before it's able to get the DPS. And the same is said with 20 pikeman versus 20 Kutsidae. You run in, you take one swing, one trade, you lose a couple cavalry units, but you kill five to 10 pikemen, and then you just run away, you can heal them up and wait for the recharge to come back in and fight again. The Kutsidae is absolutely insane, and I highly recommend if you're playing the Civ to make use of this unit. It's absolutely bonkers how strong it is in the right hands. Just get into the habit of hitting and running, and not doing extended trades and extended battles. Come late game, I think you should try to secure a lot of relics. So Castle Age onwards, really try to secure the relics because you get food and gold for them. And the late game for Burgundians does rely a lot on gold since your trash options really aren't the best. Your scrims aren't amazing, your habitudes are good, but your hussars are lacking bloodlines. So your trash game isn't amazing. However, if you have a lot of gold, you can go for Paladin or Elite Coutidier plus Hand Cannoneer, which is an extremely strong composition with double gold unit. However, it's extremely pricey, but if you got the relics, and the gold on the map to back it up. It's an incredibly strong and scary composition to go up against. So highly recommend you take a look at their double gold comps if you've got the relics and the gold to back it up. And the relics are in general just an amazing thing to have with the Burgundians. The last thing I'll touch on is the Flemish Revolution. It's a really insane technology and my recommendation is to just use it when you have any bit of momentum. You can just go ahead and use the Flemish Revolution and overwhelm your opponent. It can also be really good as a comeback tool if you're getting pressured and you have no answer to their unit. Like for example, how would you when you're going for power Paladins, you can easily just go for the Flemish Revolution and use those units to counter the Halberdier and push back. I recommend though, if you do go ahead and use this upgrade, prepare some siege before you use it so that you have some siege to push with your mass military. Also, right after using it, queue some villagers so you at least have some economy to fall back on and it's not 100% all in. All right, now we've covered the strengths. What are the weaknesses? Well, the main weakness for the Burgundians is the early game. Since most of the time you wanna pick up the economy upgrades and get an advantage that way, if you get early game rushed and disturbed, those extra resources you sunk into the upgrades might not pay off in time and you might start falling behind. So the biggest weakness in my opinion for the Burgundians is rushes in Dark Age and early Feudal Age, which can kind of throw off your build order and make that investment you put into those upgrades not pay back and make things a little bit awkward for you. I also think they have a weak trash game as I already mentioned. And so denying relics from Burgundians is probably their biggest weakness. Try to deny them relics and use your map control in early Castle Age or in Feudal Age to get ahead of the game and secure those relics before your opponent can, opponent being the Burgundian player. And if you can just force them into a trash game with no gold and no access to their strong power units, then they're going to feel pretty weak and pretty lackluster.
If it isn't clear by now, I'm gonna go ahead and recap their power spikes. In my opinion, their power spikes come in in Castle Age and in Early Imp specifically. Their Late Imp power spike is pretty much only associated with the Flemish Revolution. So you go ahead and click that when you're ready to end the game or when you need a really good comeback option. And that's what the Civ has available. So the power spikes really comes in with the stable in early game and then Flemish Revolution slash gold composition in late game. I will also add once again that securing relics just helps you secure those power spikes as well. All right, now let's talk a little bit about matchups. I would say generally speaking, the Burgundians are amazing versus cavalry civilizations. The reason for this is because their cavalry is simply better in most cases. And even if your opponent techs into Halberdier, you can easily go for your Flemish Revolution and destroy those Halberdier and just overwhelm them with a champion slash Halberdier hybrid unit, which they can't use their cavalry nor their Halberdier to take out, which is the two main tools that the cavalry civs have to offer. You also have amazing monks and you have strong infantry yourself as a Burgundian so you can go for your own halberdier and so just generally speaking this civilization has every answer to cavalry in the books you could think that camels might counter the civilization because usually you want to go for cavalry but really it's not that simple burgundians have a ton of options that they can go for and they can easily play pikemen and crossbow and castle age while they set up for a big cavalry switch in imperial age or simply go for halb and siege in imperial age and so they're really not that heavily countered by camels also cavalier do okay against camels because of the extra two attack compared to a regular knight and so cavalier plus monks does pretty fine into camel compositions in general. Don't be too afraid of camels. It's really not that scary as the Burgundians. And so cavalry civs in general are a good matchup. And what I would say is a bad matchup is those heavy archer civs. The reason being, if they can go for like a lot of archers plus some halberdier in the front, can be tricky to know what to go for. Flemish Revolution can't counter the halberdier because they've got the mass archers. And if you go for your cavalry, the halberdier are right there. You also don't get amazing skirmishers and amazing onagers. So archer civs can be a little bit of a tough task to take out when you're playing as the Burgundians. Indians. All right, now what exactly are the best maps that you wanna pull out the Burgundians on? What maps are they the best at and what maps are they not so great at? Well, generally speaking, Burgundians are not a naval civilization. So pure water maps are out of the question. The civilization is pretty bad on those ones. Never really consider it on pure water maps. On hybrid maps, I would say that they're okay, but there's probably a lot of better options out there. So once again, Burgundians are not amazing on hybrid maps, which is a map where there's some water and some land. Burgundians really shine on pure land maps, mostly closed land maps like a Arena and hideouts, and even Redis at Fortress, where they can go for a massive boom, getting those early economic upgrades, pulling ahead in terms of resources, and then just simply overwhelming with their strong gold units come mid and late game. They also have a chance to secure their relics because the game is a little bit more slow paced, and they have a lot of strong cavalry units to snipe enemy monks and make sure that they're able to secure the relics themselves. They're also pretty good on open maps though, something like Arabia and Serengeti. You can definitely get away with the Burgundians, but you just have to play a little bit defensive because, like I said earlier, their biggest weakness is that early game. And getting rushed too fast. So on open maps, they're still really good, but keep in mind that there is a lot more risk in playing the Burgundians. So you want to make sure that you're really playing a tight, tight opening to make sure you get away with those early eco upgrades and start to bank resources as opposed to getting punished way too early in the game. So once again, just to recap on land maps are strong, but if it's an open land map, be a little bit more wary. So in conclusion, the Burgundians are a really flexible civilization, but most of their power comes from their cavalry and their ability to control the map and get the relics in the mid game. It's a really fun civilization to play and I highly recommend to check it out if you haven't tried it yet. And uh, although it is behind a DLC, it could be worth getting the DLC if you don't have it. It's $10 for a couple of civilizations, so it's definitely not too bad. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and let me know what I could be doing better in these videos and what you enjoyed the most in the comments below. Love reading them and that's going to be all for me. Take care and bye for now.